Welcome back to the Bernard Lee Poker Show. We are talking with two-time now WSOP bracelet winner, Brian Pacioli. Uh, also, he finished sixth in the 2017 World Series main event. We uh, talked already about his win and also his great summer but I also wanted to talk a little bit about uh, his father, who unfortunately had a devastating accident back in 2016. Uh, unfortunately, he is um, he he is a quadriplegic right now. Uh, his biggest fan, Brian's biggest fan, as he kind of introduced the game to him. Um, but tell tell a little bit about how he's doing and and uh, how he kind of probably lives vicariously through you <laughs> during all of your incredible runs. Yeah. So his accident was in August of 2016. It was shortly after I, I had a run in the main event, like a few weeks, literally like two weeks before that. Um, right. In 2016, I was, I was chip leader going into day five that year with like, there were like 250 left. Um, day six was real rough ended up or sorry day five ended up busting at the end of the night in like 80th place you know so to go from chip leader to just not even making the next day at that stage was real devastating and you know I went you know I just wanted to see my family right after that I went home you know saw saw them for a few weeks and you know my dad's always been you know Bri just keep plugging away he says just keep plugging away so you know I was real down for legit like weeks up you Mm -hmm. know and so but my wife and I had this Europe trip planned. And so we went over to Europe. We were going to hop over from like Copenhagen to Sweden to Greece and, you know, do, do a bunch of stops. And we were on the second part of our trip in Copenhagen and uh, got a call in the middle of the night that you never want to get. It was my mom. She, she couldn't even really form words to be honest. Mm. And they, they didn't really know. It was such a freak accident. Like, you know, you can try and replay it a million times in your head, you know, it's not going to change the situation, but it's, yeah, he was, we have two dogs and he was just kind of taking them out the front door and, you know, he'd leashed them up and I guess their leashes kind of like got wrapped around like his ankles. And then one of them got startled by like, I don't know if a truck was driving by or whatever. And it kind of, he kind of took off and, I guess his weight must have just got swept out from under him and hit, you know, must have just fell real hard head first, landed on his neck and just like, you know, that, that was it. And wow. so just can, you never even think of, you know, freak accidents like this even being possible. And so like, like I said, you can try and figure out, you know, what happened, whatever it's, it's pointless. You know, you just have to, you know, live with the situation at B. And so, uh, they didn't really know how serious it was at first. They had to, you know, call, they had to helicopter him up to Buffalo. We're from about 60 miles south of Buffalo. And uh, they didn't really know for like a day or so how serious it was. And so it was like almost a full, like two days after his accident where my mom like finally called me and, it, you know, it was like, it was our like fifth day out of like a 25 day trip, you know, where we had everything booked. They didn't want to uproot our whole trip. Right. 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 Serious. And, you know, obviously it ended up turning out, you know, being as almost as bad as could possibly be. Um, And so kind of right away, the, like he did rehab in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at a a incredible center at UPMC um, for a few months after that. So they airlifted well, we, him down to uh, Pittsburgh. No, right? no, no. They airlifted him up to Buffalo first, and he was oh, okay. in he was in the ICU for like yeah. you know a handful of days. He was still in Buffalo when I got home, and then there miracles do happen, and you know with spinal cord stuff, right. some guys right. in his situation you know have regained some movement, and so they really try and those first few months after the accident are vital. You know they really try and get the body trying to, you know, get back to its old tricks, you know, per se, and, right, you know, right, learning right. these things that it used to know so well, but it was kind of, they were, the doctors were pretty, you know, straight up with us. At the, they were like, it's like, you know, very, very small chances of him really ever <clears throat> improving his condition. So 
yeah, he's he's in bed, you know, pr- most pretty much all day. Um, right. But you know, we I you know we talk it we talk talk a fair bit, and I keep him updated on all my poker stuff. You know, talking to him on the phone is you know he sounds the same as he always does, and you know we can talk about. Luckily, like poker kind of can always you know unify us. And whenever I go home and see him, usually, like I like doing one day where. I won't do a whole session, but I'll fire up some ACR tourneys on my screen and then plug my screen into the HDMI cord and to the mm-hmm. TV in his bedroom. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he, he's, he's still real, you know, mentally sharp and he, he's played poker for decades. Like right. we talk spots all the time, you know? And so like, yeah. it's just, you know, a good thing that we can bond over. And but yeah, I remember last, I was home for Thanksgiving, you know, last year and it was obviously super difficult with COVID and stuff. And, this was before vaccines coming out and stuff. So it's like, you know, we drove and then tested before we saw him. And, you know, right when we got home, like I, like I, I stayed over at my wife's house for a day. And yeah. So talk, talk a little bit about that. Cause you live in Vegas. They live outside right. of Buffalo. Remember right. everyone, I know it's a different world and it's changing every bit, but this is before COVID vaccines yeah. and your dad is obviously somewhat immunocompromised. Yeah, so definitely. it must've been tough, right? I mean, you, you're yeah, not I mean, flying, you're driving the whole way, right? Yeah, exactly. And I'm used to long drives. Like, like I'm right now, I'm in Salt Lake city visiting my, my wife's sisters. They have two yeah. twin nephews, two twin boys. Nice. And I have a boy on the way, so we're we're really yeah. getting our feet wet here. This <laughs> yeah, a yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, like um, I do long car rides all the time. So, mm-hmm. like I've done the cross country drive probably close to ten times now. So, um, right. like I feel like it's obviously much less risk than flying. You're not packed right. onto an airplane with all these people. You're only with who's in your car, and if right. I have an electric car, so I, I just charge up, but it's like, even if you have a gas car, you know, just if you sanitize your hands when you right. use the gas pump, you know, you wear a mask when you use the bathroom. I feel like it's like pretty low risk, but then, you know, just to be safe, my wife's family lives a mile from my, my parents. So we kind of just quarantined there for the first night, got a rapid test the next day, came back negative. So we're like, okay, That's you good. Know, Excellent. Yeah, right, dad. Right. So yeah, right. we saw my parents over Thanksgiving and I had a, you know, a few times where I, I plugged my screen up and I actually like, I think I final tabled both like a 215 and, and a 66 buy-in in the same session for like 8K and like 2K or something randomly right. one day. And so that he was really into it that day. It was kind of, you know, good to, you know, it's just something to get him excited, you know? So right, right. Um, he's a big sports guy. So we talk a lot of sports and golf and stuff. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, it was, and, it's, it's and he got just, you, he, he got you into poker, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 Right. It was always like growing up, he'd play, it was Sundays and Wednesdays, him and his guy friends, they rented out a little one, one bedroom apartment and they just have a poker table in the living room and that was just you know that was all they used the apartment for and um <laughs> that's great they take some they take some money out of the pot for you know drinks and you know pizza or whatever but there wasn't like you know rake or anything it was just you know right, guys right, right. Fun. and yeah. so uh i would you know it, i I always was waiting to get to that age where dad was right. like, Oh, you know, you're, you can, you know, come hang out with the guys. Right. Now. Right. So right. Right. I think it was like, I was like 13 maybe or 14, <laughs> like the first time he let me, you know, come and right. just kind of hang out. And it was like a bunch of old guys smoking cigars and right, you know, right. watching football and playing cards. And I was like, right this is this is this nice. is this is good yeah. right it's very it's, it's very similar to my set my experience with my dad playing with his brothers and his friends and yeah. and you're listening to them banter and all this stuff and this you're is feeling what like, guys oh, this do. is what yeah. exactly it's exactly this is what they do okay yeah, i can't so, wait to get to that moment yeah yeah yeah, 100%. I, yeah yeah i was like he was actually the year he cashed the main event was like 2006 um, right i was 17 or maybe 16 and he had put on five hundred dollars onto Poker Stars to try and uh-huh. satellite in. Yeah. So he plays all the satellites. The summer goes by. He he still has like a few hundred bucks left in his account, and right. I knew that the password was saved on his computer in his bedroom. <laughs> so I had only played Play Money at this point. So I like right. snuck into his room after school one day, logged on, and of course I just hop right into a one-two no limit game with the whole <laughs> 
yeah, and yeah. Getting pocket queens and like this is my first time ever getting pocket queens in my life you know what i yeah, mean yeah, 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 i went yeah. all in and yeah. brother got at aces and i lost all all 200 of dad's money <laughs> but i knew that you know the satellites were over for that summer and i that was the only reason he deposited so i like knew right. that he wasn't really going to log back into the account for you know i thought it could be till the next you know next may or when you right. know when he wanted right. to play again right and so I was kind of like, you know, for the first week or two, I was real nervous, but then I was like, all right, you know, what it's, it's over, you know, he, right. it'll, it, it's a problem for another day. And so like, yeah, I remember specifically the carnival ended up coming to town and I was at my friends like a month, month later, we were on our way to the carnival and my dad, I just see him like walk around the corner and he's got a look in his eye, gives yeah. me like one of these steam <laughs> coming out his ears and <laughs> drove me home and, you know, gave me the talk that was like, you know, like I've got a decent job, but if I didn't have a secondary income playing poker with my, my buddies, you know, we wouldn't live in a house this nice and all, you know, he was really like driving all the points home of, you know, responsibility and like how it's, you, right. know, you know, money's real and all. Right, these right, things. right. So I learned, I learned then pretty quick about, you know, bankroll management and you know whatever. <laughs> so that was my first, like, exposure to real money poker was right 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 at poker stars account. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> then, then, then afterward uh, when all of that done then did he go all right what hand did you lose on <laughs> yeah. yeah that's yeah, great so, that's great yeah, and, and I, was like always, you said, he, I was exposed to it from an early age through him and he didn't really like teach me the game i kind of was like I kind of just learned at the start through just trial and error and play money right. online. And I was just like, Oh, you know, these things work, these things don't. And so, right, 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 right. And as you said, he cashed in the 2006 world series main event. Yeah. So uh, that was the year, obviously Jamie gold uh, took down uh, him and his, him, his friend and him went out together. They like chopped a room. They both played, they sold action to all their home game buddies. And they busted within, I think, like five players of each other. Oh, wow. Crazy. Like they finished like 757th and like 761st or something. Wow. You know? That's nuts. They bu- and they busted out for 12 and a half K for the min cash. And yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. They, they would always tell the story like, you know, buy-ins 10K, you fly out there, you stay hotel. They're like, we lost money on the trip. Right. <laughs> and we cashed. <laughs> the that's so, right. That's right. Yeah. I was yeah, always yeah. like, I remember like, and poker stinks you can go out there and you cash and you still lose money like yeah yeah i was like dad what'd you waste the last week of your life for you could <laughs> with me <laughs> yeah 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 so you know you talked a little bit about the covid trip to see your dad but what was covid like for you just in general playing because obviously p- poker is such an integral part you are primarily a tournament player you do yep. so well in tournaments yep tournament world shut down for so long especially after the uh, the shooting star and, and and a couple other events here and there but once it shut down what kind of happened to your world and how was vegas we've heard so many stories about vegas of the strip being just literally empty yeah. probably for the first and only time ever what was it like during covid um yeah it was I actually my wife and i went on a drive down the strip the one night uh where yeah. it was like it was real late and we couldn't sleep and she's like what do you think the the strips like right now i was like let's go for a spin so let's we find out and there were like we saw like 10 cars the whole trip Amazing. up the strip it was unbelievable All, like most of the lights were off i literally i remember i literally saw tumbleweed blowing across <laughs> Las Vegas Boulevard. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I tried to get my phone out, but it like right. went behind a rock or whatever. But it was like something out of some dystopian like Mad Max right. or something. Right. Like there was literally right. tumbleweed blowing across yeah, an yeah, empty yeah. Las Vegas Boulevard. It was unbelievable. That's nuts. So uh yeah, but luckily online games started, you know, boosting up at that point. So yeah, I was just kind of, you know, hunkered down with wife, grinding online. That was pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, with the, with the casinos, like you said, a lot of the lights are out. Were there barriers up in front of a lot of these casinos Some, as well? Yeah, Bellagio. I remember Bellagio, they literally boarded the doors up because wow. uh, I don't know if they were worried about – because this was around the time of the protests starting too. So I think, like, they were worried about looters and, like, you know, there was 
people were just, you know, rioting in pretty much every major U.S. city. So right. it was crazy. Everything was closed down. Casinos started boarding up the doors. And I remember Drew Amato had some photos um, that he took. And he's, you know, great, you know. Photographer, photographer right. And, right. You know, in the poker world. And he posted some photos that, like, they were very epic, like, just you know, pictures of like, just how Vegas was at this time. And it was, it was definitely, a, I mean, I'm assuming a once in a lifetime situation. Yeah, like let's hope so. Yeah, Vegas. Let's definitely hope so. Um, so the plans for you for this, this summer, uh, well, not the summer, obviously, this fall World Series is coming back, obviously, concerns there was there's been some twitters back and forth from the world series about their new rules about covid and all this stuff what uh, as of right now what are your plans for this i mean you live in vegas so obviously right. those plans can easily be changed back and, and forth that, but that's why i'm not even making plans right right, right, so right. I'm I'm just, i've heard I'm that a lot taking it day by day like yeah. it's like and my wife is due in a few months too so it's like i don't know if i really want to yeah i granted yeah. i did play all summer when pretty much nobody was wearing masks i even had a kid like i busted a, a friend of mine or poker buddy from color or uh california in a tournament and the, the a wind tourney so you know like all his physical chips became mine right and then he texts me the next day and is like hey bro i just tested positive i wanted oh. to let you know yeah. so like <laughs> Oh, like I literally, your stack became mine, but it's like, right. imagine how much of this was going on during the right. summer, you know, Absolutely. and it's like, it's just like, in, in a, you know, I had COVID. So it's just like, I, I was just like, it's just kind of, it was just kind of part of like what you were signing yourself up for when you went to play, of but course. it's like, you know, my, right. the further now with, a, went, now with it, a baby on the uh, way, it makes yeah, it a little it's, bit of a difference. So I'm just, I, I'm honestly going to just take it day by day. Like, I'm in Salt Lake on a family trip now. I'm going to, we're here till Tuesday. I'm going to go down to Mexico to play some of the GG stuff. Uh, one of my best friends in the world, Marty Mathis, the lipo fund on, as people know him online. Um, he gets married on September 17th down in Rosarito beach. He lives down, he's lived down there since pretty much since black Friday. He's been down wow. there like a decade now. He's marrying wow. a chick from down there in Mexico. So uh, a lot of, a lot of our crew will be down there for that wedding and it works out pretty great like the gg series wraps up i think even right. like earlier that week like that sunday and then his wedding is i think either friday or saturday so yeah yeah um, yeah. yeah i'll probably just you know sp spend the next like couple weeks down in mexico do the wedding and then come back and just kind of see how the wsop is looking you know i feel like it's kind of pointless for me to plan right now right 100 like, percent you just never know how numbers are going to go or how, you know, mandates or restrictions, all these things right. in this new world of ours that you have to deal with. And so I'm just kind of just going with the flow, hopefully win, win a bracelet on GG in Mexico and then not really have to care too much about it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. If, if, if it's like, if, you know, if turnouts are good, you know, I'll, I'll be in there, obviously. Sure. I don't, sure. I don't, I don't, I don't like to miss events. <laughs> well, congratulations uh, on, on the baby. Uh, Thanks a lot. That's fantastic. Yeah, baby boy. Three, three months, uh, three months after, or sorry, three days after Thanksgiving, he's due November 28th. So a COVID yeah. baby uh, is on yeah. the way. Yep. Uh, yep. It, it's, it's good that it's obviously after all the vaccine and all that. Right. I, I can't imagine the people who are having babies, literally during that time we're, we're doing ours time. we're doing our birth at our house actually oh yeah wow yeah with wow, the midwife okay. and doula yeah, yeah. that's yeah, i mean yeah. she's doing it yeah <laughs> babe do it like it's, right right you're what like she's, what she's comfortable with do. yeah right, so, right 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 um, right that's, that's what we're doing so wow. it'll, it'll be nice to not have to worry about you know being in the hospital and being around tons of people so yeah very excited yeah. Well, congratulations. Congratulations on your Thank second you. bracelet. What a great Thank win. You. Obviously, even the circuit main event. I mean, another phenomenal win there as well. Uh, wish you all the best and, and good luck this summer. Uh, well, I keep saying this summer because I'm so used yeah. to saying that, but it's, it's all good. Good. we're at, all going to be saying it. 
<laughs> right. And, and uh, you know, hopefully it, it will happen. And uh, I'm still a little undecided as a, the trip is all planned, but still a little undecided on, on my plan. Mine's a little bit different. Obviously, I have to make those plans because it's all the way across the country. But uh, we'll see how it is. Fortunately, the World Series, I'm sure, will always be there uh, no matter what happens, whether we go or not. But uh, wish you all the best, buddy. And congrats again. Thanks, Bernard. Brian Pacioli here, two-time WSOP bracelet winner now, and uh, really a great story uh, with his family and also the 2017 main event and, and winning his second bracelet against pretty much one of the toughest final tables we have ever heard of. Stay tuned next week as we continue our coverage leading up to the World Series. Lots of other interviews, lots of other winners uh, and other people to talk with. And as always, may you always go in with the best hand and may you never get unlucky. Good night, everybody.